Spoiler alert, I actually like this movie. Hammerhead is not your typical ridiculous shark movie. I mean, yes, there is a shark, and it's a sci-fi channel original, obviously. But it kind of has more in common to do with a big, dumb action flick than it does an animal horror film like, say, Lake Placid or Deep Blue Sea or something like that. I mean, with as much fights and explosions as this movie has, I wouldn't be surprised if its creation was explained by, you know, Michael Bay just kind of being drunk somewhere in the tropics and deciding to make a movie out of whatever was just lying around. Needless to say, this movie doesn't take itself too seriously, and that's a plan that works for it. Now, here are your two leads. The woman is a biologist working for a big biochemistry company, and that dude over there happens to be their quote-unquote IT guy. They are romantically involved. In, in fact, the plot opens on them exchanging dialogue that's so awkward and kind of sexual that it probably could have turned the movie into a porno. It was uh, getting a little awkward in the room I was watching the movie in. So that biochemistry company also happens to have previously employed a crazy scientist guy with a killer mustache. And by that, I mean his mustache makes me think he's killed someone. So this dude shows up out of nowhere after being AWOL for years and claims to have a cure for cancer. Via flimsy science, that cure for cancer involves sharks. Now before we move on, Techie Chris wants me to remind you that sharks do actually get cancer. They aren't really useful for preventing cancer in humans, and we probably shouldn't be harvesting them to, you know, help us out anyway. Right, Tex? Right but that's the science that this movie is using. I mean, it's a ridiculous shark movie. What do you expect? So a team of people from this big corporation head down to the mad scientist's secret island base in order to figure out if what he's discovered is going to print the company money. Turns out it's a trap. He's made a half-man, half-shark hybrid, and he's planning to kill everyone for revenge. He's also got an Igor. As he should. I suppose now would be a good time to talk about the cast before they all inevitably die. Most of these actors and actresses kind of stick to the low-budget science fiction realm. I mean, that's not to say you wouldn't recognize some names, it's just that they all kind of swim in the same pool. Uh, the leading lady is played by Hunter Tylo, who I first knew as Taylor from The Bold and the Beautiful, the soap opera. Shut up! I had an ex-girlfriend. Now, a lot of the extras also have Bulgarian-sounding names, which I guess is a way of saying this movie was probably filmed in, uh, in Eastern Europe. But, you know, despite the low budget, everybody pretty much carries their share of the acting load. Except for uh, one lady. She plays the vapid eye candy of the president of the biochemistry company, so, I mean, it's not like she's supposed to be smart or anything like that, but... It doesn't come off that way. She comes off as a bad actress. Every line she has, which is not many, just... It's just bad, and it kind of takes you out of it, and you're just like, okay, this person doesn't know what they're doing. It's kind of like that lady from Mega Shark vs. Giant Ox, but she's like the scientist, and she only has like two lines, but it's like, oh man, you must be related to somebody, because... But, I mean, anyway, that character dies pretty quickly. In fact, a lot of people die in this movie. I mean, on land, because it is a hybrid shark man thing, in the water, good guys, bad guys, killer shark man doesn't give a shit, he's hungry. And... And he's also horny? See, another sign that this movie was originally written to be a porno are the plot points about the shark itself. Spoiler alert, it ends up being the scientist's formerly dying son and the main character's formerly dying lover. The same person. So, for sciencey reasons, the guy is trying to breed his son with humans in order to create... shark? babies? A cure for cancer? I kind of forget. It gets lost somewhere in the middle of the movie, but it's not working well. All the women die in the process. Either the shark man kills them or they don't survive the labor, so he figures the best way of getting his shark nasty going is to use his son's old lover. Maybe he'll remember her and won't kill her outright. That's the idea. So you get this very tense sequence of the main character being lowered into the shark's waiting embrace. But if I'd mentioned that now, I'd be skipping all the explosions. In between the creepy stuff, this movie is definitely an action movie. Starring a tubby, man-boobs-having action hero just generally tearing shit up. 
cars are exploding, helicopters are exploding, boats are crashing, people are shooting each other. It's definitely a wild time. Now, I do not know if this movie's intelligent enough to be parodying action flicks by letting a fat guy with charisma run wild, but it is a damn entertaining product either way. After all the smucks are dispatched, it comes down to the tubby commando to rescue his lady friend from certain icky shark-related things. I never thought there'd be something worse than being eaten by a shark in one of these movies, but here we are. So Tubbs used this, like, nitrogen-spraying gun backpack thingy in order to explode the hammerhead's face, and what is an enjoyable end to an enjoyable movie. Now, I've seen the reviews on this one. I don't quite agree or understand with them. I mean, to me, Hammerhead hits on the enjoyable side of stupid. as a fresh enough take on the concept of a shark movie that, man, stands like head and shoulders above a crowd of, like, poorly written, poorly made movies that don't understand that you just can't be dumb. You have to be fresh or enjoyable, or you're just wasting everyone's time. Jump scare. Ah.